Hi guys, welcome to the Business and Remote Work podcast brought to you by Vishup. Vishup is the fastest growing remote workforce service provider and I'm your host Crispino, joined by co-founder of Vishup Nilesh Rangwani. For today's episode, we have business coach, author and founder of the Solopreneur Academy, Sue Allen with us. So welcome to the so- show Sue. It's great to have you here with Thank us. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. All right. So let's just dive right into it. So first of all, uh, Sue, could you tell us, uh, could you please define the term solopreneur so we all know what we're talking about? Is there a difference between an entrepreneur and a solopreneur? Such a great question. So first of all, solopreneur, a lot of people don't even know the term, but it was invented in mm-hmm. the eighties and it's kind of a mashup of solo. So someone who runs a business on their own and entrepreneur. Yeah somebody who runs a business. So it's somebody who really wants to um, operate their business without employees. So solo business, solopreneur, one person business, all kind of the same thing. But there are actually some major differences between solopreneurs and mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. Uh, first mm-hmm. of all, doing the work. So solopreneurs are people who want to do the work and want to continue doing the work. So that might be someone who's a writer or a graphic designer or an attorney, and they just mm. really like what they're doing. And solopreneurs also tend to, not tend to, um, consider, if, if I was to introduce myself, it would be based on the work I perform, not my business structure. So nobody ever says, mm-hmm. hi, I'm Sue, I'm a solo business owner. They say, hi, I'm Sue, I'm a writer or I'm an attorney. Whereas entrepreneurs, yeah may start as a solo business, but their goal is to hire employees and scale and delegate Mm -hmm. the tasks of their business. So rather than Mm -hmm. somebody who enjoys cleaning houses, they want to be the next Molly maid kind of thing. So they may start out cleaning houses, but not continue. And then uh, in terms of growing the business, so solo business owners generally don't want more work than they can handle. So if you're a plumber, you serve an area, you don't want to manage a team of plumbers, right? You just kind of want it to be you and not grow. Mm -hmm. Whereas entrepreneurs, they want to grow and scale. And so Mm -hmm. they're all about hiring other plumbers to do the work so they don't have to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. then uh, the third big difference is where you work. So for most businesses start in your house or your you know, your garage, your parents' garage, like Microsoft or Disney or Amazon. But solo business owners are generally happy to work from home and continue doing that. So, so being an entrepreneur is tough. Like we already spoken about it in the episode. Uh, It might look really glamorous on Instagram, but you know, when you get to doing the work and the work that is involved, it's very difficult to manage all the different aspects of running a business, especially in the fields that you might not be an expert in. So how does one tackle the situation? How does a solopreneur deal with these situations? Yeah. Yeah. So you are, you are really right. Um, and the, so first I'll just, um, I, I have had so much experience trying to do things myself and failing. And one embarrassing story is that I was trying to add a form to my website and this was several years ago, but to get people to sign up for my newsletter, it took me three weeks and I still couldn't do it. And finally I hired, Mm -hmm. I outsourced it. I hired a guy. It took him 15 minutes. He did it. It cost less than 50 bucks, right? So one of the ways that you just deal with the massive, massive amount of work is to outsource things that you aren't good at, don't know how to do, don't want to know, or shouldn't be doing. So a lot of times that's outsourcing your website stuff, what coding setup, Mm. you know, webmaster, things like setting up a form on your website, that kind of thing. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of people really struggle with creating content. They don't like to write or they don't like to take photos or they make crappy images. So that's something, again, if you don't do it, don't like doing it, outsourcing it. Um, Bookkeeping and accounting is another area that takes up a lot of time and a lot of people choose to outsource. 
Um, and then mm-hmm. legal things, you know, writing your own contracts by watching YouTube videos is never really a good idea. Yeah. And, <laughs> and also things in your home that you can outsource that will make life easier. So if you, you know, if you don't like cleaning your house, then hiring somebody to come in every week or two to vacuum or hiring a gardener, that sort of thing. So I think that is one thing that is really helpful is to outsource things that you don't want to do. Um, I do recommend that people learn enough that they can manage people. So for example, I um, I took a three hour course in website security and cyber security in small businesses. I am nowhere close to an expert, but that gave me enough information that I knew what I needed to do and I knew what kind of person I would hire and I knew what they could help me with. So that's really something that's helpful. The same with accounting, like nobody <laughs> needs to go back to school to become a CPA or get a degree in accounting. But if you could take maybe a four week course at your local college, just so you know the difference between assets and liabilities and you kind of understand the basics, mm-hmm. or if you have a, an accountant that will teach that to you, that just makes you so much more confident and also there's a safety factor because you can when this person you hire who's an alleged expert says oh well you need to invest a million dollars in cybersecurity for your business you know like yeah don't think that's really true so mm-hmm. hiring and outsourcing helps and then the other thing i am a big fan of is creating checklists and documentations to documentation to help you run your business so that every mm-hmm. week when you go to write your newsletter you're not reinventing the wheel and figuring out oh what do i do here how do i add this mm-hmm. image what size is it and so that mm-hmm. just saves you a lot of time because you have essentially a manual to help you run your business so yeah mm-hmm. creating sort of procedures operations manuals and then Hiring people to help will make a big difference. Got mm. it. I have a question, uh, a follow-up question on that. What, <clears throat> what kind of tasks should the solopreneur do themselves, and what are the tasks that they should absolutely not do themselves or delegate? I think, it dep- I think it depends on the solopreneur. It also depends on your budget. You know, most people who start don't have a lot of money. So you're doing mm-hmm. things like adding forms to your website because you just don't have the budget to, to hire somebody. But I think you mm-hmm. need to outsource areas that are problems for you. So for example, if mm-hmm. you are not doing your bookkeeping and you're not invoicing clients promptly and you're late paying the IRS, that should definitely be yeah. outsourced. If there's mm-hmm. areas that cause you great stress, I had a, um, a coaching client and she was just this brilliant illustrator and graphic designer. Her work was amazing. And she wanted mm-hmm. to send a newsletter to her clients every week. Well, she hated writing. And we worked together for about two years. And every week she would promise that she was gonna do it. She would never send out her newsletter. It made her feel bad, it affected her business. That's the kind of thing that you just need to outsource because you know, it's, it's just not, it's not good for you mentally. Um, Mm. but the, the accounting answer to how you choose to outsource is that you look at your hourly rate. So say you're earning a hundred dollars an hour as a writer, Mm -hmm. and then you look at what it would cost other people to do tasks Mm -hmm. and say it costs you $25 an hour to hire a virtual assistant. It just Mm -hmm. doesn't make financial Mm -hmm. sense for you to be making images in Canva for your Instagram account when Mm -hmm. you could Mm -hmm. be earning $100 and paying somebody else $25 to do it. And and then there's areas that are just straight out of your area of expertise, like, you know, preparing your taxes or creating a contract for somebody where you just really need the advice of experts. So uh, essentially what you're telling me is that anything that is worth less than your own time should be outsourced. Anything that is important, but worth less than your own time should be outsourced. 
Right. And also anything okay. that is just a, that just, you find so demoralizing to do, you know, that mm -hmm. if, if you hate doing your bookkeeping and you're putting it off and it makes you feel like a failure or it, like, just get rid of that. Hire somebody that can do it. Um, it's going to be faster. It's going to be cheaper. You can focus on other things and you'll feel a whole lot better about your business. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, so I wanted to ask you, like, uh, we've got an idea about the solopreneur, the kind of jobs that they do. Uh, but is it possible for a solopreneur to scale their business? So yes, completely. It depends what you want your business to look like. So mm -hmm. solopreneurs grow by outsourcing to independent contractors using people like WishUp. And that is perfectly mm -hmm. fine and and like encouraged as i said it's a great it's a great way to grow it really depends mm -hmm. on what you want as a person so you know my background mm -hmm. is in writing i as as i said i ran an accounting department i know what it feels like to manage people i don't want to manage mm -hmm. people ever again so for, mm -hmm. for me and most solopreneurs we really want to stay as the person who is doing the work we love in our business. But you hmm. could totally scale by hiring independent contractors. And, you know, if you're a business coach and you want sure. to hire independent contractors to help build your coaching business, there is nothing to keep you from doing that. It's just a personal mm -hmm. choice. Um, and, you know, mm -hmm. again, just looking at things that you're finding demoralizing. Like if you're for example, say you have a free Facebook group that you invite people to join and that's sucking up all your time. By mm. offloading that to an independent contractor, well, you're going to be able to take on more clients and do more of the work you love. So it's not really scaling mm. in the way that, you know, Jeff Bezos scale, but you certainly yeah. can be more productive and get more out of yourself if you're outsourcing mm -hmm. and doing the work you like. Yeah, I can add something here, Crispino, from our experience. So mm -hmm. anything that requires the entrepreneur's time mm -hmm. uh, does not scale, right? So right. if your business requires your own time to deliver final value, the last outcome, then your mm -hmm. business will not scale, right? right. Mm -hmm. And that's the essential part of being a solopreneur, right? But if the end outcome can be generated by a machine, or can be mm. generated by uh, other person or can mm -hmm. be recorded uh, by technology or can be generated by money, then that business becomes scalable, right? So any business that requires entrepreneur to give the end output does not scale. Mm. Yeah, you can do things to free up your time, but you're absolutely right. Like there's, mm. there's only so much time one person has yeah exactly uh so sue i wanted to ask you being a solopreneur can be very stressful you know at times i tried my hand at it as well and i was juggling two three jobs and i know how tough it was so how does one balance their personal and work life being a solopreneur so that's a really good question and i think it starts with your goals and what you really want balance in your life to look like and that's going to depend on the person. Mm. So if you're single, mm -hmm. you maybe you can work 80 hours a week and you're absolutely fine mm. with that. If you mm. just had, if you just had triplets and you have like one year old triplets at home, your yeah. life balance is going to be very different. And you may only have 20 hours a week to work. So I think mm. you just really need to think through okay, what do I want balance in my life to look like? What is reasonable for me? What is reasonable with my business? Mm -hmm. And then I think one thing that has really helped me and a lot of people is to have some kind of dedicated workspace. So it's hard to feel like your life is balanced when you're working at the kitchen table, the family is doing stuff around you. Now, sometimes you have to do that but if you can create a workspace in the corner of your bedroom or someplace that's dedicated, that really helps with balance because 
when you're in there, you're working. When you're out of there, you're not. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I think another thing that helps is having standard hours. Now, you know, my kids are grown. I can do whatever I want time-wise. But for me, I always start work at nine o'clock. And that means I'm not sitting there with my cup of coffee going, oh, maybe I'll watch something on Netflix. Oh, maybe I'll throw in a, a load of laundry. Like I created my own structure where I always start at nine. I take lunch break. I, I work like banker's hours now. I didn't always, but I take lunch between 12 and one. And so, you know, if you can create structure like that, it will help you. And also like you decide you're going to work nine till five, stop at five. So that, mm. that helps with balance too. Um, something else is what deciding what you're willing to do during work hours. So are mm. you willing to do laundry? Are you willing to make dinner? Are you willing to chat with your friends? Are you willing mm. to, I don't know, like go to the dentist during work hours? Like, what are you willing to do? And then stick with that. So for me, I don't chat with friends during work hours. I don't scroll through social media. I do that before work or on my lunch hour. I don't do laundry. Um, I do go for a walk at lunch with my dog. I do watch TV at lunch a lot of times while I eat lunch. So just figuring out the structure that will work for you. And a, mm. a tip I have found that really helps with balance is to choose like Wednesday afternoons to be your Aaron appointment time. So if you need to make a dentist appointment, then make it for Wednesday afternoons. You just block it off so you never have clients or you need to take the car in to get the winter tires on. Do it at that time. And then if say, you know, your dentist doesn't work Wednesday afternoons, she only works on Monday mornings, well then just switch it off. Make Monday morning your, you know, your block of time. And I think mm -hmm. that really helps with balance because you are accepting that other things are going to come up in your week and, you know, mm -hmm. and just making time for it. I have a question about, uh, women solopreneurs mm -hmm. uh, since you coach a lot of women solopreneurs what are the most common um, uh, areas in which women choose uh, entrepreneurship or solopreneurship so the women that i coach are basically well some of them are quilters which is my hobby so in the in the fi you know the um, fiber arts business most of the people that I work with are service businesses. They're coaches, trainers, um, teachers, that kind of thing. I, I do not work mm -hmm. with people who do manufacturing. Um, mm -hmm. That's yeah. kind of my area of expertise. Um, Got it. So. I just wanted to go back and a couple of things too with balancing. One is I think you really need to respect your work hours and you need to teach people to respect your work hours. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you, if your kids see that you're playing Scrabble on your phone during work hours, they're not going to respect you. You're not really going to respect yourself. So really, and mm -hmm. you know, when people phone, like tell your mom, you know, I'll talk to you after six. So really respect mm -hmm. your work hours. And the other thing that mm -hmm. really helps with balance is to actually schedule your hobby time or you know whatever you call it so if you're somebody who likes to work out make sure that you've got time to go to the gym in your schedule if you're somebody that likes to quilt make sure that you have time for your hobbies and that really helps with balance too because as we've said there's there's way more to do than you have time to do it in so if you know that you spend Saturday afternoons working on a hobby or you always go out for brunch with friends on Sunday, then that always happens. And that makes it much mm. more, it makes, it gives you much more of a balanced life. And, and it also helps you. Like I'm always amazed at the ideas that come to me when I'm sewing because my hands are busy and my, it, my mind has a chance to just sort of decompress. So those things have helped me to be more balanced. It's nice. 
so so uh, i wanted to ask you and this question again comes from my personal experience so when starting a business uh, or when you start a new business there could be times where, you, where there are dry periods where you don't have any sales or leads or it just feels like no one is interested in the product or service that you have to offer so how do you deal with disappointment as a solopreneur and how do you come out of the situation So yes, big problem. Been there many times. That's a great question. Um, I, I think most solo business owners and most business owners have have faced this. And sometimes it's just a matter of giving it time. You know that you're not going to be Jeff Bezos with a hundred and forty billion dollar net worth three weeks after you started your business. So that yeah. that is one thing. And I have to say that I'm I'm facing this myself because I started a YouTube channel. A few months ago, hmm. I've been putting out videos every five days. Some of them hmm. have no views. I have a whole seventeen mm-hmm. subscribers, right? So sometimes <laughs> you just have to put one foot in front of the other, commit, just keep going yeah. forward, and you know, time will take care of things. But the other thing that we are so lucky to have now are analytics and data. So mm-hmm. look at your analytics and figure out. Where the problem is, so for mm-hmm. example, um, and and how to fix things. So maybe people aren't going to your website, right? You mm. and look at it, or yeah, so somebody's not going to your website. Well, what can you do to drive traffic? You know, why aren't they going? Are they not finding it? Is it not indexed on Google? Are did you not mm. do search engine optimization well? So they're looking for. Solo business owner, and your business name is Solopreneur. Been there. Mm. Um, so there are a lot of things that, if you look at your analytics, what can you fix? And you know, maybe you're mm. not getting people to sign up for your freebie download. Okay, well, what's the bottleneck? Mm. Is the tech not working? Are people trying to, but they actually can't download things, so they're not on your newsletter list? Or mm. um, what other th- things can happen? Um, Oh, so maybe your like maybe your freebie download isn't really relevant to what people want. So you need to yeah. redo that. Or maybe you've written mm-hmm. an ebook and the people that are in your audience actually don't like to read, they like to watch videos. So a mm-hmm. lot of times it's just a matter of problem solving, trying things, trying things again. Mm-hmm. Um maybe pivoting, maybe not. try something mm-hmm. different so maybe if people aren't going to your website you can try facebook ads so mm. it it i wish there was like one super easy answer but it really is just trial and error and keep putting one foot in front of the other yes that's absolutely correct uh so I, i wanted to know your take on remote work like uh personally i feel that yes virtual assistants and outsourcing is a great uh great great source through which you can you know uh ease up a bit of your stress and get an expert in that field so i wanted to know your take like what do you think of uh, of the future of uh, of the outsourcing industry and companies like wishup i think outsourcing is fantastic i think that it's important to have a company like wishup that vets their uh contractors or th- Do you call them mm-hmm. contractors, employees? That, yeah. That's their people. So that you know that people. when you're hiring someone to do something, they actually have the skills to do it. Um, and yeah, and other yeah. companies like um, Fiverr or Upwork, the same thing. Mm-hmm. If you can actually, they don't really vet their people, but they've got lots of reviews. So if you can they've go through sick. and mm-hmm. just you know make sure that the people are competent at doing what they're doing. But working remotely, mm-hmm. uh, solo business owners tend to be really good with technology. I mean, most of us have been using Zoom since long before, you know, the the world discovered mm-hmm. it pre-COVID. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so the advantage is that if you're using a company like Wishup, you have people from all over the world that are at your disposal mm-hmm. to help with your business mm-hmm. and so they might have skills you can't get locally it might be a price point that you can't get locally so it is just such mm-hmm. a fantastic way to grow your business and um to relieve stress and the the only sort of caveat that i would say with hiring remote workers 
is to just be careful of security. So if you're hiring somebody yeah. to work mm -hmm. on your website, you know, make sure you change your passwords before and after. Uh, make mm -hmm. sure you only give people permission to the part of the business that you need. If you're hiring mm -hmm. someone to help with your accounting, well, you know, keep an eye on your bank account to make sure that they're not, you know, buying dog toys mm -hmm. on your dime kind of thing. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that outsourcing is fantastic. It's gotten easier and really I, I have nothing. I, I use it all the time and it's made a tremendous difference in my business. No more three weeks adding a form to your website when you have, you know, yeah. a company you can call to, <laughs> to hire somebody. Yeah. And, and the best way to secure yourself is actually to go through some platforms like Wishup instead of, <clears throat> you know, trying to onboard people yourself, because we go through a proper vetting process, um, on our platform and we go through the background checks, their stability, previous jobs and everything. So, you know, that's another way also, of ensuring security. I think we also have an NDA in place, right? Nilesh? Yes. NDA yeah. and, you know, um, so basically legally these platforms are very safe, uh, legally speaking. Good. Mm. All right. Awesome. So, so it was amazing having you on the show. It was an interesting conversation. I learned a lot. And, uh, so just before I let you go, I'd like to ask you final message for all the solopreneurs out there. Um, so I think I have three comments. One is the great thing about being a solo business owner is you can choose a business that works for you in your life. So you get to choose what you're selling, the hours you work, how you're going to conduct your business, how you're going to market market it. If you're an extrovert and you live alone, you can go to networking meetings all day long if that's what you want to do. If you're an introvert and you don't want to leave your house, you can run your business like that. So mm -hmm. I think that, and, and also choices. So if you're somebody who loves Instagram, but hates Twitter, don't use Twitter. You know, if you, mm. um, if you love meeting in person and not over Zoom, you don't have to meet over Zoom. So it gives you so much flexibility. So create the kind of business that works for you, the hours you want to work. Um, and then create boundaries and deadlines so that you have some sort of structure in your day. And mm -hmm. that can be, you know, making sure that you have a separate workspace, making sure that you have deadlines that work. One, one of the things we didn't talk about with outsourcing, but is so fantastic is that if you hire, you know, Mary to do your social, to write your blogs for you, and mm -hmm. she needs your information by three o'clock on Monday, that builds mm -hmm. in accountability, right? If you're doing it yourself, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I'll blow it off this week. I'll blow it off next week. And you know, nine yeah. months go by and you haven't done a blog. So <laughs> yeah, accountability without sourcing is a really good thing. Um, yeah. and, and just some self-discipline, like make rules for yourself. So you're not scrolling through social media when you should be working. And then uh, the final piece of advice we've talked about uh, quite a bit, and that is just, you do not have to do this alone. There are lots of ways to do things without hiring employees, companies like WishUp, having somebody come in and clean your house, um, you know, hiring mm -hmm. somebody for just a one-off job to fix your website. All those things are, are available and just free up your time so you can do the work you, the work you want. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks again, Sue. I mean, that was an amazing piece of advice and I really enjoyed this episode. Uh, I got to learn a lot. So thanks for that. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. I appreciated it. Thanks a lot, yes. Sue. Wow. All right. All right. Thanks, Sue. Take care. And hopefully we can do this once again. I would love that. Thank you.